in their quest to rescue the missing priestess of the Dawn Goddess, our heroes, the Swords of Jordaba, have captured two members of the band of Kenku that attacked them. Victorious, they now proceed onward in their exploration of the dungeons of the old city of Jordaba. And, um, all right, so, you guys are down here um, in the old city of Jordaba, which, as we know, has been um, completely buried in a bizarre mix of volcanic rock uh, and limestone. Um, the, uh, the city gates are still there, although nobody goes there anymore. All kinds of strange things um, to be found in the, um, in the dungeons down underneath, some of which used to actually be streets. Um, but now things have tunneled from place to place um, over the course of the 500 years since the original catastrophe happened. So now it's just a very, very strange, dangerous place. People don't come here, except for you guys. Because um, we're strange and dangerous, too. Token uh, idiots. Strange, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Dangerous, you're still first level. So uh, <laughs> Don't mess with Muriel Thunderfist is what I'm saying. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Drop one so, Kenku. That's right, yeah. baby. <laughs> it all, it's after the first Kenku, it's downhill. <laughs> so speaking of Kenku, you guys are here uh, in the room where you had the fight with the Kenku. And so Skeeter, Kelchik looks around, Kestrick looks around. There is that little gargoyle thing, um, which once again, it looks like... Uh, one of the little things that might be a gutter or a, a corner ornament or something like that. Um, and uh, uh, it sort of almost looks like it's been torn away from its masonry because it's got like little bricks and, and stones and things still attached to it. This one looks like a little person with a great big head. Um, you also have... We uh, have one in, of those. <laughs> cool. It, you know, you're, you, you know... Is it as sinister as this one? This is a sinister one. <laughs> um, there's the there's this door over here, um, which is in uh, the east wall, and then there's another door in the south wall over here. Um, you've got the two kenku that you took captive, tied up, and put on what appears to be a stone altar uh, over in the corner of the room. Uh, Possibly that could be to, to any god, you know, uh, although uh, most recently um, this area apparently was was held by the, uh, um, the, the cult of the dawn goddess. Um, uh, are, we, are we calling that held? <laughs> the one 60 year old priest just shuffled in here in her bathrobe. <laughs> well, no, it was actually it was actually y'all had it even before that. And the thing was that. Uh, you know, back when it was an actual uh, city. Um, and so, you know, some of your priestesses were, were buried uh, in, the, in the great big thing that happened here. Although, according to uh, Temple legend, virtually all of them were outside at the time. So there's something kind of interesting about that and the divine retribution bit. So you guys are, you're in the room. Uh, the room is about uh, 20 feet uh, east-west, about, you know, 30 north-south. Um You've got the Kenku, and your uh, centipede begins going over and sniffing at this door. Uh, as I recall, Matt, one of the door we came in through, now is that the east door? That leads back to a room that also has three doors in it, plus an entrance. Is that correct? Yes. The, the, uh, the room on the far side of this door, you want to peek through the door? Okay, so you peek through the door. Um, this other room has got, um, rather than doors, there are large gates, all three of the, uh, the exits from the room that has the terracotta lions in it. Um, they're all quite big. Um, and am I looking west gates. when I poke my head in the door? In that door? Yeah, when you, poked your, when you poked your head through the door, you were looking west. Okay, so the, okay, the room so we're currently was... in actually has three doors. Well, the one we came in in, which That's is on correct. the west wall. Yeah. One I, wasn't, directly... I, wasn't, I wasn't counting the one that you came in. Okay. Yeah. One directly across, one to the right. One directly across and one to the right. And then there's the the room, the original room we came in on, which has doors at every car, doors or gates rather, at every cardinal point. Yeah. Okay. 
So we okay, have except, so except no, everybody is in, there's not actually there's not actually a gate where you came in there, but I mean that's that's tiny okay. detail. Yeah. And so y'all are y'all are talking you're by the the light of a of the single torch held up by Thibodeau, where the you know the resin occasionally cracks or pops and uh, flickering light all through the room. Looking okay, at okay, we thing. need to go back to the original room and see if anything is in the terracotta lion that was hollow actually before we, we do that left that uh right now tovax wounded am i right about that oh my goodness yeah oh my. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, it's not the as same it, as it yeah, happens what? zach is my video frozen it is it is Your and i took it off the uh main screen until it comes back okay because you were doing fine and i didn't see any reason to interrupt okay um the so as it turns out actually my wisdom is a 15 after getting a two or three point bump thank you matt which means i actually do have one first level spell so moving up in a while. so should should i burn it on dovax kidney um or are we kind of hauling prisoner kenku out of here like basically, are we continuing or falling back, and uh, are we burning the curative spell now? Tovac, my would, impression would, is is you got hit pretty hard. I would say burn it now because Tovac will die on the way out if we don't. There's only one more room to get out of the dungeon, man. We right. just it's got like it. The, the entrance is like 15 feet away. <laughs> uh, I mean, the exit. I'll probably be fine. I mean, it just. If you just take point from now on, Muriel, because you seem fairly confident these days. But got it. If if you want to take point, I'll just be right behind you. I've got my throwing axes. I'm I'm good to go. But um, do we want to ask these Kenku what they know, and then if they don't know anything, we can just eat them. Because I'm getting hungry. All that fighting. That the Kenku, first. if I recall correctly, the Kenku were unconscious, right? Yeah. Correct. Sleeping or something. Yeah. Yeah. Left and now they were they were put to sleep and then tied up. All right, so we're going to hold off on the cure light. Is that what I'm hearing? And I, I mean, I guess if we get jumped, I can fire it off. All right. I think I'm okay yeah. for now. I'm not right. in desperate need. I'm just you know, tender. <laughs> it's the, the liver dangling out. It always okay. Hinges. I think I got. Terra, my, I think I got. Terracotta lion. All right, terracotta lion. Me All and right, Tibido. So why don't we drag the Kenku into the first room with us? And that way, if we need to beat a fast retreat, the retreat spot is right there. Uh, and we haul the centipede off the door. Okay. Well, yeah, let's put the let's put the Kenku on the centipede and all move back to the first room, check the terracotta lion, then come back into this room and then check the gargoyle. And then we can figure out if these Kenku know anything. Should we check with the Kenku and see what they know before we start poking around? Um, I don't think they've been that good. far, if his story was true. Wasn't his story like he was the king of all Kenku and he ruled the, under the, the Jordaba realm? He's dead. That was his story. Yeah, we killed that one. Right. Yeah. But I don't think we got a story about the other ones. Did uh, we? Well, we can just wait. the fact that they said they just got there. Did they say that? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. uh, I don't know what direction they came from. Because they didn't uh, come the same way we did. Uh, they, they, there, there was an implication that they had come from um, inside the dungeon as opposed to outside. But you, like you said, you've got no idea whether, they, whether he was telling the truth or not. Maybe he is the king of all the king. <laughs> Why don't we find out what they know? Um, if they can't tell us how many are in their nest, we just... Like I said, we eat them. I say, I say question first, search next. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wake one up. Because if one of them says, oh, yeah, we don't mess with that lion, that's where we leave all of our nitroglycerin. You I think know. that is highly unlikely, but I will go with it at this point. Uh, I agree with you. It is highly unlikely, but, you know. Okay, Matt, we will wake up a Kenku. Okay. Okay. So one of the Kenku is now awake and sitting up on uh, top of the altar. Did we pull everybody back to the other room? 
No, no. You said you wanted to question these guys. Right. In the other room. <laughs> we haul the la what? <laughs> haul what? the what? Kenku. What is it? Haul the Kenku, haul the sleeping Kenku, haul the dead Kenku, haul the centipede back into the initial room. Okay. And then we'll wake up the one Kenku. And then Well, the one Kenku is already awake, so Okay. Because um, you already you we did dra that. we drag him bodily back to the first room. Okay, so dragging the Kenku bodily back, you head through back into the original room. Yes. And there's the uh, so yeah, this this room um, has a somewhat higher ceiling than the one that you were in. Just uh, redescribing it since it's the first time you've been in it since um, the last pilot adventure, as I'm calling them, since the uh, skill that I'm using. You can't get the, uh, the centipede back in here. It won't come back? Well, uh, Rakestric is, is kind of pulling on the reins back in there, but it keeps sniffing at that other door. Okay, I'll just leave it in this room. <laughs> Good puppy. I don't think it's Good puppy. Gonna, gonna go anywhere. It just doesn't okay. have opposable thumbs. It's not gonna open the door. So Rakestric comes in um, and you guys are sort of gathered around in here. Um, we'll leave that door open, Matt. I know it's closed on the, the thing there, but we'll leave it open so we have a sight line to see what the heck the centipede's doing. Okay, yeah, he's just he's just sniffing at the at the door. Okay, so um, this room that you're in, is it's got the, the higher ceiling, and of course it would have been some sort of central entrance point into the city, a square, city square or something like that. It's got the, the lions, then there's the gate, to the north, and uh, the gate to the north has got sort of copper type uh, bindings uh, on it in terms of the metal. Then around here, you've also got the earthenware lions. You've got a much, much plainer uh, looking uh, gate. It's, it's not fancy, it's old weathered wood. And then there's the, the way out over there. So uh, turning back around you have your kenku one of whom you've already uh, first woken up and then dragged slightly squalling um over to where you are and uh uh he says um ow my head hurts <laughs> all right i don't care um <laughs> tell us where you came from in the dungeon what direction did you come from? Uh, uh, well, parenthetically, uh, Matt's video is frozen again, and it seems like that might be an important component at this point. Okay, go. go. I'm back. All right, awesome. So, um, all right. So you've got the uh, you've got the the Kenku and um, uh, Rakestric has just asked it where it came from in the dungeon, and it seems to have to think for a long time about that. And he says, uh, uh, well, we didn't come from the dungeon. Where did you come from? Uh, Jordaba. Okay. I'm going to grab a handful of feathers Ow! and just rip them out. <laughs> Where did Why? you come from? It. Where did you come from in the dungeon? Well, not Jordaba, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I I will grab another bunch, but not tear them out yet. Hang on, hang on, hang on. He may be on answering honestly. Remember, this isn't necessarily a dungeon in the typical sense of stairs down. I mean, this is part of the city of Jordaba. Am I correct, Matt? I mean, uh, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's yeah. a buried part. So when he says the city of Jordaba, he, which part of the city? Well, that's that's true, Priestess. But when I'm talking about Jordaba, I mean actual Jordaba, like, you know, down the slope, in the river, in the Kenku uh, quarter around the Council of Murders. All right. Let's see what you did. <laughs> oh. We're sorry, by the way, that we killed your king. I feel bad about that. No, 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 we are, we are definitely not. They tried to kill us. Okay. That's true. And, it was, and, and, they, they and may I first. say, 
May I just say that that was entirely Frank Oz's idea and that uh, the rest of us really had nothing to do with it, happened to be along, found ourselves in the doorway, didn't know what was going on, tried to negotiate, but then he was already dead and we were knocked out. So really, uh, I would say that uh, probably there was nothing that, you know, legally in any sort of sense like that would be considered a crime. Well, we're not in court, so you're... You're off the hook there, but that might second be handful of, the, of feathers. That was might it, be kind of the best. <laughs> did you follow us in, into this uh, this dungeon here? No, that's why we were ahead of you. Well, one of you was ahead of us, and then the other ones were behind us. Because now they we're getting. To, I'm they still pulling his dagger out. Okay. And how uh, how did you manage that? You got here ahead of us. One of you was ahead of us. The others managed to sneak behind. In, uh, no, we were in the stable. Yeah. And the stable is the gate opposite you, and you all look around, and it's the sort of plain-looking gate that's over there on that side, opposite the side of the room that you guys are standing on right now. Great. The the door in between the the ceramic lions. Are all, you the, all of the doors are between ceramic lions. There's a ceramic yeah, lion in each, Sorry. each corner, Jim. <laughs> the... The door between those two ceramic lions. <laughs> um, definitely not a waste of a liberal arts education. There. Definitely not. Uh, um, often mistaken, never in doubt. Uh, how familiar are you? How familiar are you with this complex, with this place? Has this your, is this the first time you've come here? Uh, uh, yes, this is the first time. Well, uh, uh, Frank has been here before, and um, he met with somebody... Uh, who was doing something. We were supposed to deliver uh, a, a letter. Fr uh, Franco had one before, but uh, one time he came in here and he was attacked by little rock things. Uh, and so he wanted to have you know some more people, even though it meant that he had to share the money uh, a little bit. Uh, so we came along with him. But uh, you know we went to the stables to basically guard the rear while he was going in uh, to this area behind you to go and meet with the guy that he was supposed to meet with. And we were just supposed to be rear guard. Only then we heard, you know, the, uh, heard all of you guys and came to see what was going on. At, at which point we completely innocently stumbled upon, uh, what was obviously a, an altercation due to misunderstanding on both sides. Absolutely. Another totally handful understood. of feathers. <laughs> um, I'm collecting some feathers. So, okay, in order, you've got, you've got a bunch of feathers. In order yeah. of importance, uh, tell me about first of all the person that uh, Franco was meeting. Franco, 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 yeah, Franco, Franco, Franco. Uh, was uh, was meeting. Second of all, the rock creatures. Third of all, the letter, and last but not least, the money. Where is that money now? That's last, but so okay. guy Franco's meeting. I, I don't know your order of importance. Does it is it by height, in which case it's the priestess, or is it by authority, in which case it's the druid, or is it by woodliness, in which case it's the elf, or I assume it's not the halfling. The halfling, your leader. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. You said that it is the halfling. That was the kinka. That was the kinka that said. <laughs> I assume it's not the halfling. Think about stabbing yeah, him between his toes. Um, I'm, I'm gently going to gather yet another handful of feathers. Oh, no. And and this leadership question arises why? Because you said to, you said in order of importance. Right. Sorry for the miscommunication. In order of importance by topic, which I raised. Topic number one: the person that you're meeting. Tell us about him. Topic we number two, the little rock creatures. Tell us about them. Topic number three, the letter. Where is it? And topic number four, the gold. Where's that? What was the first one? The first one was the person <laughs> that you were meeting. The person that we were meeting. That, well, we Talk weren't. Me about him. We weren't supposed to meet him at all. You see, he was Frank Oz's uh, contact. And so, you know, obviously that's Frank Oz's game. We're not going to step in on his game or else people might have to end up stabbing each other in the back the way things happen. So we... Uh, uh, but we were hired, so we're doing our job, and so we were 
off in the stable, but Frank Hall wouldn't have wanted us to know who it, who it was that, that he was meeting because then somebody could have maybe gone around that, you know, and bought out, you know, for, uh, you know, taking Frank Hall's contact away, you know, as, as one does. Right, right. And we all know that everybody in this chamber is a person of high probity and honor and who would never consider such a thing. But, but rogues are known to exist if perhaps one of your group had undertaken the underhanded trick of getting to know Frank Oz contact, would that person be able to tell me, that theoretical person, be able to tell me more about him? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> hypothetically, that person didn't have time. Ah, uh, I see. I see. <laughs> well, un- unless, unless he did, and he points, you know, to the other, <laughs> to the other one that can't do. Am I still frozen again? You, you refroze. With a lovely quizzical expression on your face. Okay, well, um, I think, <laughs> Zach, we're going to have to do the, the opposite of theater of the mind, and let's just ignore the fact that there's a picture of me anywhere, yeah, and I, I, will just, I will just talk, it's already, um, and then we can... It's already off. Okay, good. Second you froze, all, right. Uh, all right, so you didn't have time to, to try and snap, or... This theoretical person that we're discussing did not have time to snaffle his contact. What uh, what was Franco into? What kind of business did he do? Oh, pretty much, you know, the same business that, uh, you know, all Kenku do. We, uh, uh, we make deals. We work for people. Um, uh, we backstab people who are ahead of us. Uh, we... Um, hmm, uh, steal contacts from one another and from other people. Um, <laughs> I think that's probably it. There's probably some other, you know, smaller business type concerns uh, that uh, that some of us have, I suppose. You know, money lending and uh, you know, extortion, uh, bribery, blackmailing. Um, but that's you know, that's generally it. Frank, you know, he was uh, he, he was sort of a Renaissance uh, Kenku, really. He was uh, he had his hand, his hand, he had his claws in uh, several different uh, businesses: blackmailing, extortion. Um, uh, law. Uh, I'm his. I'm his. His. His partner uh, in the in the law firm, and um, so <laughs> I like uh, this guy. I I'm, I do too. <laughs> I do. You're pulling I, feathers I out. Do. But hey, yeah. you already defeathered like at least a good portion of him. Can we just finish the job? And my my name my name the Kenku says I am I am Yazul probably now Yazul the bald, um, <laughs> but uh, yes. Um, and, and I am a very, very likable uh, Kenku, um, and uh, uh, no doubt will be of you know, enormous assistance to all of you without any backstabbing or, or anything along those lines. Your, uh, your exposition has been most convincing on that point. The, uh, the next question, I think the next topic up for bid was the small stone creatures, which uh, Frank Gaw ran into. Uh, how did he describe them, and how did he escape them, and more, uh, more importantly, where do they live? Well, uh, he he Age just. Hmm? I was just. Are they lion shaped in any way? Just out of curiosity. It's a, a salient point. Well, there was there was one of them in the, there's one of them in the next room, the one where uh, uh, where there was the misunderstanding. Oh, the gargoyle. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a little little gargoyle. I mean, I yeah, I, I assume that's one of them because that's it fits the description that Frank uh gave and. Uh, uh, he said that um, when he uh, when when he saw them, um, he engaged in a retrograde action. Mm. I, I and probably run away, um, as one does. The letter that Franco was delivering is he perhaps still carrying it? Uh, no, Franco was. Franco got the letter from the person that he met here and delivered it. Uh, into Jordaba and then was told to come back and get another letter. So as, as far as I know, uh, he wasn't uh, carrying a letter. He may have been carrying uh, something else, like a key. Delivered to whom in Jordaba? Uh, to the Council of Murders. That is perhaps the longest pause I have ever heard in a D&D game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
everybody's trying to think of a crow joke, I think, probably. Um, the, uh, and do you know what was, uh, what the topic of the letters were? No, I, you know, he, he, Frank would never, you know, show a letter like that. Mm. Well, I mean, he would, but no, you know, you know, we didn't pay, you know, any money for that. So no. <laughs> right. For, for, the, for the correct service provided, breaking Wait, confidentiality. Saying, you weren't at all interested in seeing the contents of the letter that he was so handsomely paid for? Well, not at that price, no. And uh, and lastly, the uh, the gold which he was paid. Um, any idea where that might be? Probably back at his house. Uh, which is where exactly? Uh, in Jordaba. Hmm. Street address number. Oh uh, well, yeah, let's see. Address. I'm uh, just fire, you know. <laughs> it's in the courtyard of Black Feathers. Because otherwise, uh, I think that we're going to have to register you for a, a name change from Yazul the Bald to Yazul One Foot. Oh. <laughs> and also bald. <laughs> the, the one footed and bald. <laughs> just, it's yeah, just, I have the bald. Oh. Um, I'm so increasingly I, interested to find out if Kenku tastes like chicken. I mean, that's what I've been saying <laughs> well, all along. It's it, well it, known that Kenku feet are a delicacy. It, 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 well, the feet, uh, it, 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 tastes, it does taste like chicken. <laughs> and it's absolutely. That's probably not what you wanted to confirm right at this minute. We, we really haven't had <laughs> oh. good meat in a long time. So. Okay. You, um, you know, elves eat chicken a lot. And, well, shit, and, you do? And my short little fuzzy <laughs> elf buddy here. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought it was just like nuts and shit. Oh, no. no. It's, it's, no. It's, it's chicken and kenku feet are delicious. So anyway, back to the topic of the gold, uh, Yazul. Um, sorry to, to interrupt with a little bit of delicacy and fine dining discussions, but uh, did you want to be more specific, perhaps, than just Jordaba? Uh, well, yeah, he's... Uh, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's some sort of agreement that could be made here. I can certainly tell you that his house is in the courtyard of Black Feathers. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe what we could do would be to talk a little bit about the, uh, the number of the house. Okay. Uh, my ears are are open, ready to hear the number of the house. I'm thinking a 50-50 split. Uh, on your feet? Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm yes. hearing. Cause Correct. I'm 50-50 split. We will leave you with one knife. foot. Well, look, I can promise you one thing, and that is that there is no way uh, that you guys would be able to get into the courtyard of Black Feathers without a Kenku with you. Vouching for your, you know, good behavior, your honest appearances, uh, your your well-spoken words. Um, In that case, it's lucky, Yazul, that we have a whole other Kenku sitting right over there. Yeah, he's sleeping in a preserved state. We might be able to also put some feathers on the halfling, and he could probably pass. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we, yeah, there we go. We See, we go. We have what what's known as a surplus of Kenku at the moment. I got two. I don't need two. I only need and, one. And I I guarantee you that, uh, well, the an open flow of information will be rewarded. An inaccurate, misleading, or closed flow of information will not. Well, I will, uh, just just in order to make sure that there's no uh, rash action undertaken by either side, why don't you wake up that other Kenku that is your surplusage mm, and have a, have a few words with him? I don't, uh, I don't see any percentage in doing that. Just No, there's, there's really not, I can tell you. Uh, actually, since we have two Kenku that are also no longer moving, uh, it does bring up the point that one of the one of us could go down there in a Kenku suit. <laughs> Same, we dress the halfling up like a Kenku. It'll be perfect. As one does. That's a cunning plan which cannot fail. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it's gone. It'll be the exact same thing. It spreads its wing like hands as far as it can, given that it's tied up, and it says, "Well, I suppose it's worth a try." Your your halfling does sound a great deal like a Kenku when he uh, when he clucks like that. Yeah. 
so I, I, don't I wish you a, I wish you luck. I don't think the fifty fifty split is going to uh, is going to work for us. So keep talking. How about how about one share for me, uh, even with everyone else, and I'll get you in there. So one at five. Or one in four. I, I, I can't dwarf math, so. Um, uh, 20%, one in, one in five. One in, one in five. I don't hate that plan. I like it. Um, I think it's got promise. We're, this guy's got moxie. I think we're, I think we're headed towards an agreement. Uh, now, when you say get us in there, would one have to be Kenku to go to this particular location? Uh, well... I would say that a couple of you probably ought to be dressed as Kenku, but people could go in that area. It's just that you'll be noticed. Um, and we would need to be getting into uh, Frank Oz's house, mm -hmm. uh, which is not going to be immediately easy. And if we do anything that somebody wouldn't really think was suspicious for a Kenku, you know, like Jimmy in a window, um, but if it was a person jimmying a window, then that would probably, people would remember that. All right. It's quite the society you have there. <laughs> we like it. They I'm only sure rob each other. Hey. Uh, yeah, yes. That people. That's correct. There's a certain so, dignity about that. There is. Uh, reverting to the earlier topic, uh, is there anything else you can tell us about this buried city? Not really. I mean, we uh, uh, we're we're members of the uh, all of all of us, including Frank, are members of the Itok murder, and uh, we we just we were just hired to to come along and watch his back, and unfortunately, um, ended up watching it, ours. Well, obviously, you know there was there, there was a misunderstanding, and um, you know so on and so forth. Uh, you know, Frank Og. His demise is, is, you know, woe, woe betide us. Frank always dead. Yep. No, there's there's no doubt. Uh, what is the Council of Murders going to do when Franco doesn't arrive with the letter? Uh, probably repossess his possessions. That includes mm. his money. Yeah. So here's the conundrum I'm grappling with here, Yazul. Say you go with us to the uh, court of the uh, Black Feather, courtyard of the Black Feather, and mm -hmm. you give us the house number. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And uh, we're in the midst of reclaiming what I think we all can agree are justifiably earned rewards. Rightfully so, yes. Exactly. Um, when one of our number, who happens to be Kenku, less than we deserve, really. I think we can all agree on that too, Yesul. Uh, when one of our number who happens to be Kenku and a known associate of Frank Oz cries out that thieves are robbing him and points to the people who are unfortunately, at least for the purposes of this scenario, not Kenku. In that theoretical, hypothetical situation, what do you think might happen? Well, I think you would have to kill that Kenku. You might as well go ahead and do it now because he's completely worthless. He's looking down at the other Kenku that's there. <laughs> um, and he, he's like, um, you know, that, yeah, I 100% I, I agree with you. He's not reliable. Mm -hmm. I'm Look, kind of wondering if he'd be interested in striking a better deal. Him? Yeah. Uh, oh, once again, like I said, you should really wake him up and talk to him uh, before you make that decision. Oh, yeah. No, we would. Yeah. Um, Why are we even entertaining this? I'm, I'm just curious because these guys have literally stabbed us in the back once and trying for to go to their nest. To, Let's go check out the lion. To, yeah, th they're just going to stab us in the back again. Have we learned nothing? Um, I have. I heard. We have learned <laughs> nothing. I heard so much. That All the time. Just all the time. Well, uh, my I mean, life is paid. I'm never going to pee again. If they're all wicked, <laughs> speaks up again. He says, I, "I would just like it noted that uh, I never hurt anybody. Uh, the uh, the Kenku who actually stabbed your kidney uh, is now uh, one of the deceased. Um, he never got a chance. He no, never got a chance. I, I, 
I myself tried to stop him, but you had slain him quickly and and uh, and dexterously before I could even come near. You forgot attractively and beautifully. Hmm. Uh, Thibodeau, let's Bye-bye. check out the uh, statue. <laughs> All right, the we'll little, little, we will contemplate the little lion now. statue. Okay, so you guys go over and you are looking at the lion statue, um, which had the sort of anomalous, uh, when you put an arrow uh, down into the throat of it, there was like a, it clicked around in a little hole um, that, would, that went down deeper into the lion, which none of the other three lions had. Um, Mir- uh, um, Muriel, you can't see. You've gone blind or something. <laughs> okay. You can see you can see them over in the corner, but everything around you is dark. All of a sudden. <laughs> you, you guys need more torches. Ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, I've, I've got. I just walked off. With the <laughs> I've got a lantern here. Okay, Muriel, here you go. Here, here's a lantern. You know, just, you guys it, a lantern. I know. I know your like gentle human eyes are made for this. Unlike ourselves here. Yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah. Now everything's cured. Now, Muriel, your eyes are okay now. It's a miracle. Thank you, Tara. <laughs> <laughs> That's just some elven curing all my oil. right there. Just don't waste all the oil. I needed to stop. fry those kenku. Right. Hang on a minute, says uh, Yazul. All right, so uh, meanwhile, Skeeter and uh, Shane, what are Thibodeau and Rakestrick doing with the uh, the Earthenware Lion? I, I wish are... to. While they're doing that, parenthetically, I do not. Not you. That That's why I said Skeeter. <laughs> right. But having fallen for the, their you. stuff behind not us you. once. Now, what does not you mean to you? It means <laughs> while they're doing that, I make sure that I'm still checking behind us because I got yelled at last time for not doing that. Okay, so you're you're, you're checking behind with the lantern. All right. Thank you, Skeeter. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, we are going to check the hollowness of this uh, here statue. Okay. Um, well, it's uh, as with the other ones. I mean, the, the outside check that you did on it um, was the same. On all of them, but that if right. there's, there could be an interior compartment in here, but it's got lots and lots of clay around it, so it's not like you're getting a ringing noise or anything like that. But you know that it's okay. partly hollow because the, the arrow went in um, deep enough that you know there there could at the very least be um, you know a fist sized opening back in there. Okay, Thibodeau, what do you think? You're well, the guy definitely. who knows about this check around it and see if there's any traps or whatnot on it okay right. um so you um you check around the outside of it you don't find any um uh any obvious uh trigger wires or um or anything like that there is um when you when you check inside the ear inside the ear there is a little tiny um switch that's in one position that can be switched over to the other position Okay, I'm gonna is, uh, back away a we, little bit. <laughs> let's kind of bang on it a little bit to see if there's if we can detect if there's anything else hollow. Um, if it does go all the way down or whatnot, you know. What is it that you're going to be banging on? Well, you know, we'll start around the head and the neck and work its way down to the you know the the belly and whatnot, wherever it's sitting, and just just kind of bang on it, see if it does sound that it might be more hollow. Well, you get right next to the to where the switch is. You get a little tiny. That's a little bit more hollow. Yeah, just around that area and everything. Mm-hmm. Now, you want, uh, now what switch, you can what you can do. I mean, you can if you wanted to, you could take your little awl out of your um, thieves picking tools and yeah, chip yeah. away at a little bit of the clay around here. And maybe if that if you do that, you'll probably be able to figure out what this switch does. But of course, if you fail your your roll. Uh, it means that you um, did something that could set off a trap if it's set as a trap right now. Yeah, 20%. Eh, yeah, not the best of things right now. But now, does it look like uh, something would move and trigger this little switch, or is it something that looks like it would have to be pulled? Pulled or pushed, you know, whatever. It looks like this is something that, that a person would pull or push. 
to do something. So mm-hmm. just guessing it might activate or deactivate something somewhere else. Possible. <laughs> All right. Well, you stick your hand in. I'll pull the switch. We'll see what happens. No, you just push the switch. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, before we do anything, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, is the switch pushed or pulled? Well, uh, not. At? It's not really either. You know, it's it's just one of those up down switches, um, and it is it is in one position and can be flipped to the other position if you wanted to. As in, just push up or down, basically. You just click. You know, it's it's one of those ones that. Um, oh God, I can't remember what. Uh, <laughs> like well, a toggle about, switch. You can either push it or pull it. Push yeah, or pull. Oh. Like okay, well, I'm, maybe we ought to just try to hold it and make sure it doesn't go off. Or move. Push a button. <laughs> well, you want to push the button? You push the button. You're right there, too? You move. See that little button? I'm pushing the button. You and your little skinny finger? <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> Run out of the way. I'm going to push the button. Room. All right. Yeah. Hang on. What did you say, Ella? I think maybe we should just go into the other room just, just to be <laughs> on the side. Because they're arguing right. over we'll buttons. Get on away from uh, Skeeters. He's pushing in one ear. I'll get on the other side of the ear at least. I'll move back into the other room, dragging yeah. okay. Kenku behind us. I'm pushing right. the button. All right. Or flipping the switch. Either or. Yeah, whichever, whichever it is. Okay, so, uh, and Ollie, you were going with... Yeah, I'm going to go uh, in here. Into the, into the other room. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, the, uh, all right, so Skeeter um, pushes the switch. And... Um, Skeeter, make a saving throw. Uh, no. (laughs) All right. And uh, Shane, make a saving throw. Oh. I think we made the right choice there, Meryl. It depends what is the answer. Oh, crap. I got a 19. In my experience, cowardice is almost always a good strategy. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, Shane, your uh, intelligence goes up by one. Well oh, done. Crap. Skeeter, uh, your... Your charisma goes down by one. Aw. Good choice. So, you know, you're not sure what happened, except that now, you know, Thibodeau's looking at you kind of strangely. Eesh. Oh, what the <laughs> fuck are you looking at? <laughs> That's that charisma going down. I never noticed that you had warts there before. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right then. <laughs> um, now just like switch it back and forth like five times quickly in succession. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I'm going with one. The, okay. Now, meanwhile, in the in the room with Muriel and with um, Tovac, Yazul the Bald um, says, uh, "Huh." So I guess they flipped the switch. That's uh, that's what Kipcar did too. Mm. Uh, well, what what happened to Kipcar? My guess is he's now really stupid based on the way that you've been talking about him. Yeah. Well, he did seem to get a little bit less intelligent after doing that. Less intelligent might be a good thing. Maybe he'll be more forthcoming. Um, he might be. I don't know. Uh, I have a ball of twine, so Excellent. I'm gonna try and no, I'm gonna try and roll it down the thing's mouth. Okay. To see if it goes in. How deep it goes? The, yeah. Okay, so you find some sort of weight to put on it, and uh, right. by the way, Yazul, did you do anything else with the? Uh... The, the lion there put a hand in it apparently things hollow Did you guys no, no, of that? I don't I don't screw around with things like that anybody else in your group uh, I think uh, pretty much everybody else messed around with the switch on it meanwhile Skeeter is feeding the uh, the twine through in there and then it, it, it clinks on something that uh, I mean you, you can't really tell the nature of the clinking sound but it's almost like glass how about that hollow bit, Yazul? <laughs> guys do anything with that? I didn't. Anybody else? No, I don't think anybody realized it was hollow. We just hit the switch. 
Mm. All right, God damn it! I'm gonna reach in there and figure out what's in there. Okay, um, you pull out a letter and a, uh, a a potion vial of some kind that contains a bluish, uh, milky bluish liquid in it, mm. and the um, the letter is 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 rolled up and it says um, to the Council of Murders. There we go. Oh. Well done, Archistic. Yay! You don't, you, you don't even know what's happening because you're still in the other room. You're just like, what's happening? <laughs> then, fine. Well done, Skeeter. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well played, sir. <laughs> okay. Well, we got this shit. Let's go in there and see what the little gargoyle dude's all about. Okay. So you guys head through. Um, bar. Move around. Go through the gate, which was actually already open. Okay, so now you're in the room of the gargoyles. Um, gargoyles? Gargoyle. Gargoyles. Okay. Um, Sounds better. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, a whole yeah. different plan if that was plural. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. Um, okay, One so. One ladder. You've got, uh, there's the little gargoyle dude um, over there. And so, you know, Skeeter's looking at him. Here you guys are. Have you got um, Yazul's feet tied, or are you just dragging him like a bundle? Dragging him like a bundle, his feet are tied. Okay. What do you do? There's the, it's, it's there. Uh, it's an ugly face thing with sort of big head and tongue sticking out and, you know, little little arms um, with some bricks stuck to it. Let's go see if it's part of the wall or okay. left so, over. <laughs> Don't. So you go over there. Um, how are you going to, I mean, it's up against the wall. Are you going to reach out and grab it and shift it or? Well, get beside it and check it all out. You always got to check things before you touch things. <laughs> all right. So you look real, real close to where your, your well, eyeball is like. Especially around the back inch, of it. Is it connected? Inch away, you look around the back, and no, it doesn't look like it's connected to the wall. You're able to, you hold your torch on one side of it and look, and you're able to see torchlight uh, crack behind it. <laughs> does it. Does its eyes blink if I get the torch pretty close? Nope. Nope. It doesn't do anything. Good thing. <laughs> Okay, what kind of... Now, you said it's not connected to the walls. It looked like it's sitting, squatting, leaning against it. It's kind of on its side, really. I mean, it's it definitely looks like it was, you know, either... It, it looks like it was torn out of masonry in one place and just put here. Like right. laying down? Side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And let's try to push him from the feet a little bit, see if it'll move. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. What if that's what the Kenku did and that's what made it angry? Maybe they just want to just be left alone. I'm, I mean, I'm no rock expert. I'm an elf expert, but all right, rocket sciences. <laughs> <laughs> hey, gargoyle, what what's up with you? It, <laughs> king, it, king, king. What was that? You tap, was that you tapping on it or what? It would tap on it a little bit. King, king, king. Okay, now, it, well, actually, I mean, it's, it's more of a, a thump, thump, thump because it's solid rock, as far as you can tell. Yeah. It also it, it ignores both the fact that Thibodeau uh, is rapping on its head and and that Rakestrug is talking to it. It lies there like a piece of masonry. Mm. Got to make sure we peek at it real good. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you what? No, oh, peek at it. We're peeking at it. We're checking it out real good. All right. No, it really, it, it just looks like a piece of masonry. All right. Move it away from the wall. Okay. You pull it away from the wall about five feet. There it sits on the ground. Hey, it moved. I don't think anyone's impressed by that, Shane. I'm going to turn to, <laughs> I'm gonna turn to Yazul and say, is this one of the things that you guys dealt with? Well, we didn't. Frank Hawk did. I, I, we didn't. And none of the rest of us saw it. And he said this was one of the, this was like one of the things that was a problem? No, I'm saying it's like one of the things he described. All right. It's even worse. He went, he went into this room 
uh, after they were screwing around with the lion, he went into this room. We went into the stables. Okay. Then you came in. And then there was a misunderstanding in this area um, that was unfortunate. And uh, Frank is no longer with us, Wobotitis. And uh, uh, so then we, you know, that's where we are. But it does fit the description. All right. They probably checked this out. There's probably another one somewhere that's exactly like this that is a gargoyle. And this one's just a piece of statuary. Agreed. One or more than one. Yeah, so okay. let's go through the door that CP is so worried about. Okay. Do we, do we want to read that letter? Because the Kenku was here meeting somebody. It might tell us something about who it is. Oh, my heavens, you found a letter? No. Says yeah, this little <laughs> shit. I, I'm going to read it right in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did not find a letter. <laughs> oh, oh I, I, sorry. You're just wondering, as one does. Right. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, yeah, I should make I'll it clear the... when I'm speaking in character and out of character. Out of in character, I don't think Muriel knew about the letter. No, that's true. They, they had I not. Will... Men- they had not mentioned it. The... Hit, re- hit rewind on that one, then, and uh, you're you're just uh, talking that's, to the, the people. About that's the just Jim talking to Skeeter and Chain. Do we want to read oh, this letter? <laughs> Walking through, looking at the pictures on it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll turn it back nothing. to the Kenku and read the letter, or at least skim it. Okay, so um, the uh, the very first thing that happens when you open the letter is that the, the top page of it falls away from the rest, and the rest of it is bound up in a little ribbon that apparently the, the, the front page was not. Well, get the top page. All right. All right. Well, the, the top page is the one that said, uh, to the Council of uh, Murders. Um, this one, uh, underneath it now, it says, to Dalmaraz, sorry, to Dalmaraz of the Finders in Shadows. And then you, you keep reading. Yeah I, yeah, I open it up and read it. Okay. Because um, I'm a nosy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> As one does, a little voice. As does. one does. So um, the you uh, lose charisma. <laughs> <laughs> so you um, you you take a look at it. And the first thing it says is, uh, we have looked into um, the ransom opportunity um, for the woman you have in the well, and we have concluded that uh, no uh, ransom, uh, no ransom is likely to be received. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Um, I well, wonder who they mean. The, the, it, it then goes on and says, um, uh, we have received um, the potions you sent us and have sent back a thousand gold pieces. Uh, what? A thousand gold pieces <laughs> uh, uh, in, in the form of a pearl which will be delivered to you by our agent. Okay. So many questions. So many yeah. questions. Uh, hey, did we check all these uh, city chickens for possessions and whatnot? Uh, you did once, but you know, you were just, you got their, you got their weapons and you checked their belt pouches. We, uh, nope. we also found a key and 40 gold pieces. Yep, full yep. on search. So, I mean, Pearls. like, yep. Like, get in there deep? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> how full on are we just, talking? I mean, I just need to know how far you're willing to go because two of them are already dead and. How far am I willing to go? Yeah. How, you know how yeah, you I... find treasure on ropers, right? <laughs> you open them up. And we are saying this in front of the one that's awake, right? Yeah, he's like, what are, what, 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 what are we talking about over there? <laughs> uh, we're, we're talking about apparently somebody might be carrying something they shouldn't be carrying. Oh, uh, well. Parenthetically, uh, can we assume at this point that we now know that he has the letter and what it contains, that somehow that information was conveyed? Yeah, well, you saw him. I mean, he, he turned away. Yeah, I'm very reading obviously letter, reading so. this. Right. 
but then it's it's just that yeah, Zul, you know, is like you know on his on his back, you know, looking up at the ceiling over there because you've got him trussed up. So right, okay. Let me get the gloves. Um. Yeah, I mean, charge him again. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll start with the outside. (laughs) Wait, why are you searching me? Search Franco's body. No, we're gonna start with you, because we like you and we want to absolve you of all wrongdoing. I don't like him. I'll search Franco. Okay, you go over and search Franco. Um, here you find that um, in the uh, sewn into the hem of his cloak, uh, there is a pearl. I don't think that's the only one. I think he swallowed one. I think one. he has one. Right there. <laughs> I think we're going to have to open him up. Franco? And then possibly eat him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, Zul's just sort of lying there. <laughs> I mean, if the elf says it's okay, it's probably okay for us to eat sentient beings because they're the wisest among us. So, I mean, sentient how'd... beings, he's a bird. How do you think we've lasted so long? We eat <laughs> other races. Do elves eat them alive? No, no, or... they have to cook them. Oh, you have to cook them. Uh, okay. Well, that's up to oh. debate. Is oh. it? Yeah, so, some some families go straight off the bone. Some families cook them up with a uh, eleven herbs and spices recipe. <laughs> mm. I, I'm gonna have to rework my entire thesis. You're you're <laughs> gonna need, well, you're gonna need to dig in so you get the full yeah, experience you're need too. Work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna be the only one. Well, could I suggest that for the cooking you work with Franka and for the uh, eating off the bone, uh, you work with Kip Carr over there in the other room, and uh, I will stay here and keep watch on the ceiling uh, until you are all finished. That, that, <laughs> that does not seem like a terrible plan. Um, okay, now that we've found all this stuff out, can we check out the door that CP is so interested in? Yes. I'm trying to keep us on task. All right. So, um, we got a lady in a well, too. Yeah, that's that's the part that uh, I <laughs> let's go get my sister out of the well. <laughs> well, I, that's what I think CP is trying to go to her because that would be a familiar trail. Yep. Makes sense. OK, so you guys go over to the door. Yep. I'll check it out. All right. Speak through the keyhole um, and everything like that. Listen to okay. it as well. You're able to tell that it's locked. Hey, it's locked. Don't we have a key off somebody? We yeah, have a key. Uh, I'm going to see if I can hear something. If they were shush. Okay. And we roll a D6 and see what, what is your, uh, what are your hear noise numbers? Three and six. Three and six. Okay. Hey, did you I, hear anything? You did not. <laughs> you do not hear anything. But you feel free to, feel free to tell them that you hear a clunky noise. <laughs> Oh boy! Look in the keyhole. There's a key in it. You, oh, you haven't put the key in it yet. Okay. No, we so haven't put the key in. I got the key. Yeah, yeah, we got the key. It's a keyhole. All right. But we got a key. It's locked. Should we use it? Are you the key master? I am the key master. <laughs> Are you the gatekeeper? <laughs> if someone asks you if you're a god, you say <laughs> you yes. Say yes. Zool. Um. Hey, it's better than Monkey <laughs> Python. Does the, uh, <laughs> Probably do that Thibodeau, too. Does the key actually fit in the lock? Uh, you you don't know. I mean, Thibodeau is looking at it sort of quizzically. All right, come on, man. I will check it. All you right, yes, it. it fits in the lock. Hey, you open the door. Give it a turn. Let's All right, turn. here you Whoa! are. Oh. <laughs> It's always Skeeter who's taken some, some by surprise by that. <laughs> I'm a simple man. <laughs> <laughs> Technology confounds me. <laughs> so you're you're in a kind of Whoa, a little that's little anteroom here, um, but of course you can go around this corner if you want. They cut corners on the uh, contractor there. <laughs> <laughs> Are we running into problems with the walls. 
Uh, just a little gap. I'm just wondering what the, the red stuff it is. It is an old city. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah, all, awesome. all, all kinds of structural flaws in here. All right. We're in. I'm <laughs> elves okay. in front. All right. Orchestric heads in. Uh, no, is, I that, think that, keep... that is elves plural. Oh, oh, no, no. I said I was <laughs> taking point. Oh, okay. I, I'll watch the rear. Um, all right. Rear little elf. Yeah, your point. Yeah. Little elf is with me. Okay. So you look in here. This is some sort of uh, uh, a, a robing room. It's got a few various religious symbols uh, carved into the walls. Um, there are a couple of um, uh, cabinets and um, wooden um, racks that have clearly been, you know, completely ransacked at this point. Um, but, uh, you know, from the pattern of it, uh, Muriel thinks that this is probably um, uh, a, an area where you would get um, robed up before either going back into this earlier room uh, where there's an altar that would be some sort of worship place or that, uh, and then probably there is a, um, uh, a temple further on that would be the sort of uh, the more sacred sanctum where normal worshipers uh, wouldn't really go there. And the centipede goes to another door. Yes. No CP to fetch. All right. No, that's cool. Let's uh, check the check the next door. There's nothing obviously hostile in here, correct? No, nothing obviously hostile. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. See okay. if we can find a person door. in the well. So the uh, the elf and the wannabe elf head up. Oh. Here we all go. Yeah. No, wannabe elf is still in the back. Yeah, with Wuss. Muriel. Trying, trying to yeah. be safe. But the Muriel. halfling is in the front, yeah. Oh, Thibodeau's the one in the front? Okay, so... Yeah. Yep. Quarter elf. Alright, so I guess Quarter. Muriel is Muriel is probably the one who's, who's, who's dragging uh, Yazel the bald along with you. Alright, you can open that feet. door. By his feet, okay. Well, how, how big is this room? I was drawing a little map. Uh, this one is about 20 by 30. Uh, 20 east-west, uh, 30 north-south. So okay. we still have um, other unconscious Kenku on CP. Tied to CP, yeah. Okay. No, you forgot him and left him in the other room. No, <laughs> no, no. CP fetch. He was on CP. Okay, so he, so you have the other Kenku there too. He looks dead. Oh, he is he? Did CP he, get a little hungry? No, no. There's no, there's no visible uh, cause of death, but he's dead. Bummer. I killed somebody and I didn't even know it. Okay. Well, I, I, well, I think this is, where, this is where Yazul was talking about we should talk to that guy first. Although, he's the one that flipped the switch. We thought. Uh, oh. No, that wasn't a bad thing. I didn't flip the switch, says, yeah, says uh, Yazul. It was Kip Carter that flipped the switch. But the, the dead guy. Uh, is he dead? Uh, he's not breathing. Oh, Robotitis Kipkar is dead. Oh. All right. Leave him here. Shit, so, he's dead. He's a burden he's now. He's faking it. Fuck him. him. CP. <laughs> that brings us up to 20%, though, right? Says Yazul. <laughs> well, let's give him the CP so CP don't get too hungry later. I mean, I we're think... definitely sure he is dead, right? I mean, Muriel, can you, can you check? Something you yeah. would know. Um, yes, that's what well, I as, think Muriel would know. Yeah, as Muriel they, can tell uh, whether something's alive or not. Yeah, it, uh, yeah he's, he's dead. As a very old elf, I can uh, I can verify this problem. He is an expired Kenku. <laughs> okay, excellent. He's pining uh, for words. Okay, sorry. Yeah, door. All right. He's called uh, food now. Quarter elf. I'm gonna listen to it. Dual basket skills. Allah. Roll yeah. D6. Oh, boy. You want to roll low. Oh, boy. I rolled the opposite of low. With okay. <laughs> All right. So you slam your boot into the into the door. And you're making a resounding noise that will have alerted anything that was in the room. Um, but now you can proceed to just sort of batter your way through it and face whatever might be there alerted. 
It just knocked a kidney to the other side. Yeah, this kidney's just moving around all over the place. <laughs> was, was the door locked? Wiggling. No, they just they just get stuck. I mean, the wood swells and oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that we even got to the point of figuring that it couldn't just be opened. She just I ran was, through. I was too busy trying to kill Kenkus. Oh yeah, well, I mean, all of the all of the doors you know are going to be you know are going to require a great deal of force to to shut them okay. up. Okay. So they're like okay. basement doors. All right, how big this room? All right, so you're able to get that door open. <laughs> CP heads to the next door. <laughs> that sound of him walking is the best. Anybody <laughs> else? What's up? You have. Oh, you we guys, forgot. You got Zul. Yeah. Thank you. So there you are. It's a, uh, just a, a very short 10 foot long, uh, sorry, it's 20 foot long corridor, 10 feet wide. Ending in a door. And uh, uh, Rakestrik is able to notice just before um, uh, before CP um, el- eliminates them that there were some sort of um, footprints uh, and stuff like that in the dust in front of the door. Um, but now they've been covered by like a hundred different legs. <laughs> CP appears to be sniffing at the door. Watch out. Get out of the way. All right. I'll, I'll pull CP back so... Okay. Uh, Tibido can not be molested by <laughs> by a centipede as he's working the door. Yeah, okay. Uh, listen to it. All right. Is there only one door in this room? Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is more of a corridor, really, except for the fact that okay. it's ten feet wide. But uh, still going east and west. These two sets of dice don't have d sixes with them. Hmm? Sells a set of dice with no six. <laughs> All right, it's two of them. They're like nice sets of dice, no six cider. Okay, um, yeah. Somebody, uh, you hear faintly, um, Thibodeau on the on the other side of the door. Um, somebody who seems to be um, muttering, um, "God damn it, Muriel, is that you?" <laughs> <laughs> Peek through the uh, keyhole if they got one. See what uh, I can see anything a little bit. No, nah, looking through keyholes doesn't doesn't usually work very well. So. Oh man, you're gonna have to have to shove through the door somehow. <laughs> well, I'm gonna whisper to him that somebody's in there looking for a Muriel. Thinks it's Muriel. Somebody answer for it quick. Um. Well, just open the door. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you open the door, Tibido? You're the only one up there that's uh, close enough to the door. Is it a pull open door? Uh, yeah. I'll pull open, but stay behind it. Okay, so you flip around to the back here. You open the door. Move the door out of the way. And uh, I'm going to go up and you, from there, what you see as you look in um this is obviously uh the inner sanctum of a temple the sort of place where only the more uh senior uh priests or in this case probably priestesses are allowed to go um without uh creating some sort of defilement um the uh and um so you got an altar uh directly across from you that's got a sort of moroccan shaped arch over the top of it and then the at the top of a small set of stairs um, is a, a, a block of wood that is inset into a stone on either side. Um, and again, that would be a, that would be a traditional form of altar, actually for several different uh, sorts of gods, but um, among them um, the uh, the goddess of the dawn. Um, also in there, there is a statue of the goddess of the dawn, um, and uh, on the other side, directly across from that, <laughs> there is a well um, from which somebody is saying, Muriel, is that you? Somebody's looking down the mirror or out, or we can hear it out of the, out of the well. Coming, coming out, of the, out well. of the well. Uh-oh. Sister Francesca, is that you? Of course it's me. 
All right. Now, one one other thing I should mention. Better change that attitude, or you're going to stay in that well. <laughs> wow. Over here. Well, wait a minute. What are you mentioning? Uh, well, I'm saying that over over here, sort of next to the altar, um, is another sort of gargoyle type thing. This one appears to have been uh, mainly a water spout of some kind because it's just a you know big old open mouth and, and some you know buggy eyes um, looking out. And then is over it, here, is there water coming out of it? No. Uh -oh. Over here, there's another one of the little guys that looks like um, you know the corner decoration. It's a trap. And over here, uh, there is one that is like a, a little skull sitting on a pedestal, kind of uh, thing. Nice, nice, cheerful decoration there. Very, yeah. Uh, okay, before we go in, Muriel, these statues, would these be in a temple? Um, well, not ordinarily. I mean, artistically speaking, would you have a skull... With little midget legs in your temple? Come on, that's an easy one, Muriel, says the voice from inside the room. <laughs> <laughs> You're being tested right now. Do, 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 Maybe the only thing you're giving me a, a, religious, a religious exam in front of one of my instructors. <laughs> no, this is not ordinarily, not I think, a symbol of the goddess of the dawn, a little skull on short legs. Maybe they were protecting the holy priestesses from the Kenku, and that's why they attacked the Kenku. Timothy, go, go drop kick that thing. Uh, you know, C CP, um, well, yeah, actually, CP does um, sort of head by you guys and go over to the well. And uh, he looks down in the well, and the lady in the well says, Good boy, CP. <laughs> All right, well, let's go in the room. One of three sisters in the order, and they like the centipede more than they like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard life. I'm going to go flip that switch like 30 times and just see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to end up a super genius with a charisma of negative 10. Yeah, well, except the only other person, the only person who was in the room when the flip switch was flipped a second time seems to have died. Yep. Um... <clears throat> All right, so you guys head into the room. Um, Weapons, just in case. I, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, not, I'm gonna draw my bow. Okay. Um, Put our eyes on the rocks. As as you are taking out your weapons, the little gargoyle thingies begin moving. Oh fuck! This I don't one think gets, they're gonna be helpful. That one gets into combat um, with Muriel. Um, Actually, let's uh, somebody. Uh, I'll roll a d6 for me. Oh, god, yeah, right, roll go high, guys. roll high this time. Oh, I did. I rolled another six. This okay, is so right. these dies are great. <laughs> okay, so you see, um, the you, you're able to see that the ones over here have begun to move towards okay. you, the one with the skull also appears to be moving towards you, and uh, however, you guys win the. Initiative, so in dexterity order, um, you're going to get to take an action. I forget who's got the highest dexterity. That's definitely uh, Shane. What do you do, Shane? Uh, you, you said they, they, they appear to be moving to attack? They're definitely moving to attack. All right. Well, I'm going to pop off my sling since I had a weapon ready. Okay. You going to attack? Uh, yeah. Which one of them are you attacking? The skull, the uh, water spout, or the little guy? Uh, little guy. I like little. Okay. So you turn to face the uh, little guy over here. I'm starting to run into a little bit of problem with the wires causing the camera to turn places I don't want it to turn. But uh, there we go. Okay. Um, roll to hit. What'd you get? Roll to hit. Four? No, I don't think a four hit. Okay, King, that hits against the uh, the rocks behind it. Um, who's the next highest dexterity? I have a fourteen. Uh, same here, but I think the elf goes first. Because... Well, which of you would that be? Then? We're both elves. <laughs> the taller oh, elf. You got the a tall elf. elf. All right, tall, tall elf. 
tall elf with the bow. Uh, yeah. Are you doing two bow shots with the bow? Yeah, yeah two okay. bow shots. Um, which one are you shooting at, though? Um, would I be able to shoot the one at the skull, or if, are we too close? Is there too much going on? You would be displeased with me with the series of things that I would set in motion if you were to try and shoot the one with the skull, because as you're looking over towards it, this this is you. And oh, yeah, uh, okay. Line gonna... up, uh, Thibodeau, then Torvac, then Muriel, then the one with the skull. Yeah, I'm going to shoot the small you, one. You can totally do it like that. Shane tried to irritate. Okay, so that one's uh, over here. Yeah, so that so Shane, is... Shane distracted it, and you rolled a hit. I got a 15, That's so a armor class 5-ish. 15's a hit. And uh, 16, so right. two hits. Full damage. Uh, that would be 5 and 3, 8. Okay, um, th they don't really seem to be you know, puncturing it. But um, just the, uh, the, the impacts of it, and it falls down um, and moves no more. So whatever it is that uh, uh, handles the life force in these animated things, um, you've managed to take it out. So uh, that, one, that one is down, and it even uh, the, the bricks that were attached to it kind of fall away from it as if it had been holding them together magically in some way. Yeah, yeah, fuck you and your tiny stature. <laughs> yeah, whoa. <clears throat> Sorry. And then we move Sorry, to the... Sorry, Water Elf. <laughs> the... <laughs> My bad, I got too excited. It's hey, that crystal right. loss. <laughs> no, no stature jokes. You got a lot of people who would be very sensitive about stature jokes here between the halfling and the dwarf. Oh, no, I killed Shane. If, Don't be doing that. Uh, if right. I wouldn't have lost that charisma point, I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's you, and then Allah. What do you do? Um. Uh, hey. Uh, here's sister, where. Here's where you fall. This definitely is not some sort of automated defense system we're destroying here, right? Just, just want to make sure before I. Uh, you know, roll, destroy it. Roll, roll no, it for no, it, been, not. Yeah. I've been no. under. I've been under siege here, not from statues, but yeah, no, kill him. Kill the shit out of him. Oh, well, I, I uh, Tovac attempts it, but because his kidneys are up, he totally messes. Yeah, it's just, he right. blames it entirely on his bad back. Okay, so you only need to move about that far to be in uh, melee combat with the with the one with the skull. Okay, uh, Muriel, what do you do? Uh, well... Does Muriel have a weapon out? Muriel was headed to the well to try and get the sister out. <laughs> you have Tovac's lantern. <laughs> um, so oh, that's boy. a no. So that's a yeah. yeah. Unless, you choose, unless you're going to use the lantern as a weapon, but uh, yeah, the answer is no. He still tells like six savings. You can, you can, you can draw a weapon, of course, but that will be all that you get to do. Right. right. Um, and movement comes later in this process. Yes. Yeah. This is basically like your surprise round type of thing. Okay. But I, can I move? Yes. As part of the surprise. Can I, uh, well, yeah, yes, you can actually, you can move freely. In that case, I'm going to just move away from the little thing. Uh, I'll get behind Tovac, so that it is between he is between me and it. Sorry, she is between me and it, and uh, and ready a cure. He is between. It depends on whether you're talking about all over Tovac. All right, Tovac, so, right. Tovac is a male dwarf. You know, I'm going to get one of those beard, like fake beards. It's going to work out. That'll well, I think I referred to as both Allah and Tovac, so I was saying he and she. It was a yeah. big. It was a big. Sorry. Pronoun yeah, no, train wreck over here. Things things so, could get. Things, things could go all the way to, like, you know, Shane, you know, moving his camera up so that you can only see his eyes, and then Skeeter wearing pointy ears, and Ollie wearing a beard, and, you know, Jim wearing a wig. So, I, you know. So, I, Muriel puts Tovac between. <laughs> <laughs> between Muriel and the so skull. Muriel and the skull, skull. thingy. Yeah. Grotesque. Okay. And ready uh, secure. Okay. Um, the, uh. Let me find out what their dexterity is. 
They're, they're statues, they're, man. You've got an 11. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I am almost, literally almost. slower than statues. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, you are. However, everyone else is faster. So starting uh, with, um, uh, you've still got your um, your sling out, um, Thibodeau. So yep. you can you can attack or. All right. Ooh, seventeen. Seventeen would be a hit. Uh, is it two? I take it. I take it you're aiming at the one with the water spout. Mouth? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How much damage do you do? That's a D4. Big whopping four points. Nice. nice. Yeah. Point. That yeah, was pretty good. All right. The, uh, and you get so, warmed up. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, <laughs> totally. Just had to get the range. That's all. Did the ranging shot. The um, <laughs> uh, Kestrick, you also have a missile weapon out. Correct. Shoot. Uh, so that is going to be a 13. That's a miss. And a 14. Yeah. Yay! For five. Boom! Artillery coming through. Okay, yeah, that one, uh, it looks wobbly, and a couple of the uh, the bricks fall off it, and it really, it's, it looks very, very unstable at this point, but it does still seem to be animated. Okay. Um, that was uh, spells and missile weapons. Then we go to melee combat. The only person who is now in melee combat is Torvac. Elf I'm ready power. for this. Yep. All right. Make Good it job. happen. Go for it. All right. Here we go. Come on. Maybe this time my dice will roll. Not garbage. Big bucks, no whammy. Protect your neck. It's it's a with my modifiers. It's a thirteen. That's a miss. Oh boy. You need a fourteen. Oh boy! Yeah, so yeah okay, nice. yeah. <laughs> but it was really, really close. It was uh, really just, close. He just hunkers down behind a shield and hopes for the best. <laughs> Elf Nation is still proud of you. Guard the kidney. Guard the kidney. <laughs> just murals uh, in the back. He's just you know. Shane, is that a porg? It's <laughs> <laughs> a mutt. Uh, All right, the skull. A cat. The skull leans forward and bites at no. Torback. No. And what? Rolls an eighteen. Oh, uh, th three is the number the, of my AC. So yeah, I think you got that. Okay, you got, yeah. And your remaining kidney does it have six or more hit points? No, it does not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it is exactly four hit points. Four hit points. Okay, so you're at negative two hit points. Yeah, everything hurts and I want to die. Uh, you can't even think it to yourself because you're so unconscious. Oh God. Um, then that was, uh, that's the only melee. Now we go into movement and, um, the, the skull shifts forward a little bit, um, toward Muriel, Muriel, uh, so that it's like there. It. And the water spout, um, yeah, you better stay water. back there. <laughs> No, yeah. right. see, it should have gone in missiles phase, but it'll go now since it missed its turn. So, um, you it don't know spits, who you're dealing with. It spits out a jet of water at uh, Raquel Rick. Skeeter, what is your armor class? Because it rolled a 15. <laughs> yeah, that hit me. That, oh, that's right. You've got a shield, right? I, well, I don't even have a shield at this point. <laughs> <laughs> your armor class is eight. <laughs> Ouch. You take. Eight points of damage. Hold oh, are you kidding God. me? I'm not. Oh, holy crap. Two in are, one turn. You are blasted all the way back to the doorway. Does that take you down? Yes, it does. Okay. So you're you're at zero though, right? Because no, I'm at negative one. Oh my How are you at negative one? You should have you should have max. Oh, because of the average. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right, got it. Max hit points doesn't quite get. Okay, so you're smashed over there uh, against it, and you're at negative one. Um, oh boy. <laughs> uh, that's it for them, though, in that uh, turn, except that you hear a sort of clinkety clunkety clinkety noise from behind you. And on taking a glance back through the door, you see the little guy that you had behind you 
in the other room <laughs> is making <laughs> is now making his way over here to what's going on. So um, that was the uh, the melee combat phase. Now it is movement. Um, <laughs> Thibodeau, you've come into the the melee area when the skull moved up. Um, so you're now within melee range uh, of the skull, uh, but missile range of the approaching little guy. So yeah. uh, can we move? If you move, uh, if you move now, huh? hang on, how are you movement? How did the skull move forward? <laughs> and the hang on, I, I, I lost track of what all was going on. It, it, I think, Matt, it's because you had the, the guy spray water out of sequence. He had missed yeah. his. So I think actually we're at the top of another round. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, so we're right. So we're at the top of the, another round. Spells or missiles? Well, I've got the ready right, now. cure. All right. Is the... um, who, what do you want to do with the cure? You've got Tovac bleeding out real fast, and you've got uh, Skeeter bleeding out a little more slowly. I've got uh, Tovac. Okay. Roll D8. Let's see what uh, Tovac gets. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Just enough. It's oh. really the worst possible outcome for Tovac. Oh, everything hurts. <laughs> so Tovac's up to one, right? Yeah. Yeah, so no oh, excuse yeah. not to, you know, fight, but also You're the least number of hit points you possibly have. You went totally heroic here, except for the, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Tovac. All right, now we're still at also in, that was spells. Now, missiles, you've still got your sling out, um, chain. So yeah, but if it's, you wanted to, you could get aim at this one that's coming down the hallway. But Yeah, but is the skull close enough to attack me? or? Yes, it is, but it's not going to get a free attack. It wouldn't mess me, mess me up with the sling? Nope. All right, let's try to whip him real quick. Yeah, whip it good. Hey, kill the kill the oh, water oh, 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 spouting thing. Oh, oh. That one looked tottering, and it's still. We don't know yeah, that the other one looked can... tottering. Has it been hit yet? Yeah, it's it been hit twice. Oh, yeah, they hit the shit out of it. <clears throat> oh crap! And it ain't it was dead two yet. arrows, and you hit it with a sling bullet. So, and it in a second, it's about to blast us with that water thing that just shellacked our Kestra. You go <laughs> hit it. All right, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll try to water guy then. Okay. Crap. Oh, oh my goodness, that's a 20. <laughs> I like this dice. Yeah, it's really. You and, you and you and Allah have the, have the hot dice tonight. Okay, so yeah. you you whisk this. Yes, you do, Allah. You got this okay. two sixes I, in a I, row. Okay. One of them was a terrible yeah. six, and the other one was a great six. But then I've been rolling like absolute garbage for everything else. So <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just. Shane oh. comes through at least with the 20 launches the sling bullet and it's a golden BB kind of situation because it smashes uh, the water spout thing into, into many, many pieces. Um, that is all the spells and missiles. Now we move to melee. And so in the melee order, um, oh, this is how I forgot it is. Uh, okay. Um, so Rakestrick is down and then... Um, uh, Thibodeau. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Thibodeau, you're first. Uh, you do not have a melee weapon out, so you cannot attack in the melee, even though you are in melee range. Um, the uh, it it Tovac does have a weapon out, so Tovac? Yeah, I'm kind of like passed out on the floor, so I'm just going to just try to jam the longsword into that skull as okay. best as I can. All right, feebly you stab with the, oh, the last of my strength. Oh, it's an 18. Plus two. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's not bad at all. Right. Nice yeah, see, right. <laughs> yes, you guys can keep those guys. Um, all right, some people so, are acting like an elf. Some people. One of them's... <laughs> and, and then somebody's just lying around on the, on the cold Dramatic. Walks. Just dramatic stabbing um, for six points of damage. Okay, so you, you, you stab the, uh, the skull and you, you almost feel the life force drain... Uh, out of it as it sort of collapses into three different pieces from that. Obviously, this, oh. yeah, the, the 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 big bad monster here was the water spout one. Um, so it's it's down, and um, that is all the people who are in melee range. Um, next, we go to movement, and in the movement phase, 
the one that's been approaching from the back uh, gets as far as Rekestre. So, and it, it does actually look like it is possibly t planning on taking a bite out of Rekestre. I'm just trying to get this to a place with it. All right, now, um, uh, have we... We've gone over the top of the round in which Rickestrick was hurt. So, uh, Skeeter, you take you you take one more hit point of bleeding damage. Okay. All right. Um, Cleric, do something. We've had the movement phase. Now, anybody who wants to switch weapons can switch weapons. All right. Uh, I'm going to pull out a hand axe. I will okay. pull out my hammer. All right. Now, um, where you guys are um, is that um, Thibodeau is in melee range of it. Tovac is in melee range of it. Uh, Muriel, you are not. You're just outside of melee range. Okay? But the other two of you guys can attack it right away if you want to with melee weapons. Um, okay. Anybody can else I, weapons around? Since this is uh, still movement, can I back up enough to still be in sling range? We passed movement, actually. Uh, we're, we're in the switching weapons around. All right. Uh, uh, let's switch back to a dagger. Okay. Yep. The, uh, we'll go to the top of the round, Spells and Missiles. Skeeter, you take another hit point of damage. Jeez. Um, any spells or missiles going off? I'm going to throw my hand axe. That's a missile. Go ahead. Well, the best. Come on, dice. Uh, it is a nine, so no. Uh, okay, so it, uh, uh, it, it bounces off the stones very close to where Kestrick's head. Um, and uh, it skitters off toward the corner. Any other missiles? No. Nope. Into melee. First off, Thibodeau. Thibodeau. I got my dagger now. I want right. to blindly charge into him and try to stab him with the dagger. Okay. We believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that closing your eye before you sing thing, it worked for Muriel. That was a 15 hit? Yeah. <laughs> really? Obviously, you know, you guys have now got the hang of it. You gotta say you're closing your eyes first and then roll the hit. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, roll damage. Roll damage. D four. Big whopping two. <laughs> All right, let me roll. Hold on. Dang. D four don't do much. Lost it. Done it. Oh, no, it doesn't do it. Okay. It's still up. Um Next in the... Okay, next to Tovac. You threw the only weapon that you had. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got a... Uh, yeah, I've got so my long sword, but I have to give my ass up and walk over there. Okay, so... Well, no, actually, you're in melee range, but you... Uh, here's the question. Are you still holding your shield? I am, yeah. Okay, so you switched out the hand axe for the... For yeah, the, during the, the weapon phase, yeah. You are actually in melee range here. Cause it's, oh, okay. You know, yeah, because it's not, um, it's a it's a whole 10-foot um, <laughs> area around somebody is what defines the melee range. So it's it's a big area because people are just moving in and out. Um, but it, it's also why, like, you know, Thibodeau could be using a sling without having to worry about getting attacked. So, um, all right, so you have no hand weapon. Um, Muriel, you are... Outside melee range, any movement? Uh, for Mario? Yeah, okay. she'll move into melee range. Oh, wait, actually, in melee, sorry, I skipped the uh, the bad yeah. guy. The skull is going to bite Thibodeau. Oh, dear. Hey, hey, hey. Rolls a 16. I think that's a hit. Mm. I got a six armor class. You take one point of damage. Ooh, Thank my God. My pinky! <laughs> um, all right, now... Uh, we go to the movement phase, and it's Thibodeau first. Uh, well, I'm already in com uh, combat with him, right? Right, so if you tried to run away, you would get a fleeing attack now. Yeah, now. Nah, I'll, I'll stay in there with him. Okay. Um, Tovac, any movement? Uh, I'm just going to get up. Okay. Yeah, ready. Uh, uh, it is also not moving. Um, and so, Muriel, what do you do? I uh, move into sure. melee. All right, you move into melee. So you can now guard Rekestrick from a fatal bite. Um, anybody switching weapons around? Uh, nope. I'm going to pull my longsword back out. Since okay, you got the longsword. Yep, hand axe is garbage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that hand axe sucks. 
Yeah, the weapons of my people are just not as good as the weapons of the elves, and I should have known oh. that, but I wanted to believe, but, you know, just have to stick with the longsword. Let down. Let down by dwarven kind once again. Okay. <laughs> um, Skeeter, you take, uh, you take a hit point of damage at the top of the round. Spells. Spartan. Embrace your elven heritage. <laughs> Spells, missiles. Um, long and prop. <laughs> Live long and prop. Um, <laughs> so, Chibido, melee combat. Melee. Dagger again. That's all, all right. I got. 14? Yeah. All... Oh, really? Yeah, well damaged. Two or more. It looks like it's got about two. <laughs> well, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The damn dagger. Jeez. <laughs> all right. Believe so... me. <laughs> okay. Come on, so, Tovac, finish this thing off. Tovac is you. Try. Uh, I rolled a 15 plus 2, so seven, 17? Yeah, that's it. Oh, hurt. And nice. five, five damage. <laughs> yeah, that's totally going to kill it. Um, with like... the, the bonuses and everything. All right, so um, it breaks apart. Um, and a uh, voice comes up from the well. Are you done yet? <laughs> oh, my God. I bind orchestrix wounds. Uh, okay, I was trying to distract you from that, but yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll get your sister out of the well if you're gonna you're gonna work on that. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, you, Skeeter, you're stabilized at wherever you got down to, like negative six or something, right? No, it was negative five. Negative five. Okay. Oh. So it's like negative six. It is a lot like negative six in that it's yeah, in that it's bad. In that it's it's not. I've seen the Elven Lance. Yeah, yeah, you you see them now. You see them now. The Great Haven. How they mount? The yeah, they're they're kind of shitty. It's not nearly as cool <laughs> as I thought it would be. It's really painful here. Yeah, it's it's kind and of cold and wet. Yeah, <laughs> it it's a lot more moist than I thought it would be. <laughs> Well, um, Tovac will try to get the other sister out of the well. Okay, so you look, you look down there. Um, there is a, a lady about 60 years old sitting down at the bottom of the well. Um, obviously, her leg is broken. Um, she's wearing blood. She's wearing uh, blood-stained plate mail, and there are the skeletons of about three giant rats uh, around her. And um, she's holding a mace in her hand and and looking up uh, uh, towards you. And see, this is why I'm the B team. <laughs> She's no bullshit. <laughs> rope. Can you uh, can you hold on for me to pull you up? Uh, yeah, you got a rope? Yeah, I got a rope. Okay. How late are we going, guys? Oh, sorry, it's eight fifteen, isn't it? Okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> we will here's what we will do. We will we will we will get uh, Sister Francesca out of the well and then we will call it for the evening. Okay, so uh, Tovac, you've got a rope, you lower the rope down. Yep. Um, uh, Sister Francesca grabs it. Hand over hands herself up while you're uh, pulling. Um, she sort of topples out of the well and she goes, uh, "Not bad, Muriel." Thank you, sister. Good oh, job, Muriel. Muriel. Oh. Oh. Uh, is that your dead elf? Um, <laughs> dying. He's, he's, he's not. Dead. He's not. We he's don't. not dead yet. <laughs> I'm not yes, dead yet. He is yet. ours. He, he oh. is ours. Yes. All right. Bring, yes, bring he it. is. Bring him over here. I used most of my cures on myself, but I've got a new set today. So, uh, all right, drag him out over there. All right, drag, <laughs> drag him over, over there. Kathump, kathump, kathump. <laughs> she casts a spell, and you get 15 hit points, Skeeter. I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you got any more of those? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Uh, my more. other elf. I don't have one. I, I don't. I don't have another one that strong, but I can give you a cue. I like, feel so oh, good. Yeah. I you smack Sister good, Francesca on the ass and say, "Good job, baby." <laughs> <laughs> you got. Uh, you get seven hit points back, Ola. Oh boy, yeah. I got a so pinky, good. pinky, pinky wound. <laughs> Your pinky hurts. Okay, <laughs> that's right. You get one hit point. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, oh, does Sister Francesca her? want to come out on yeah, an adventure party? <laughs> Maybe right out the other one. Orchestric yeah. never slapped me on the ass. 
<laughs> he, he doesn't know that you saved his life. It's just Day like the young. mystery. Yeah. We're, so, we're not done. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> so the uh, sister Francesca says, well, there is, there is more work to be done here, but at the moment, why don't we, uh, uh, why don't you uh, drag me back to the, uh, or help me hobble back to the city. Um, and, uh, uh, and then we'll I'll, I'll give you more information about what I know uh, once we get there. We'll get on CP. Yeah, CP. We'll walk. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's right. Of course. So she gets on CP. You guys there head are, back uh, out. Tenku. Yeah. She leaves yep. us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's right. We bring Go Yazul CP. with us. Ride like the wind. <laughs> yeah. um, tr- we got Yazul tied to uh, CP like a pair of truck nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so out you guys go through the dungeon on your way out. Oops. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just knocking walls down. The left, right, oh. I am, but that's okay because you're on your way out, so I don't need to have them, have them there. Yeah. You go back into the room with the lions, and out you go. Muriel, now that we're <laughs> out, now that we're out, go in there and touch that button. I don't think so. Don't touch the button. (laughs) All right. All right, guys. Matt, thanks very much. Uh, I'm going to call it and go get some dinner, which Jen's been holding. Yep. Jen's holding for me. So thank you very much.